somehow I pray I get to come to Brazil with Dr. Motri and see you. Yeah, great, great, great. I'll be right back. Sorry, Hi, Chris. Hey, Rick, how are you? It's so good to see you. You, it's been forever. I know. You are here, you guy. Oh, man, I miss you, man. Same, same. Good to see you. Same. Hi, John. Hi, Karen. Ciao, Pablo. <laughs> oh, what a beer, John Hickey. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, everybody, I'm going to... Hey, Chris, how are you doing? Pretty good, how are you? <laughs> oh, hi, Rebecca. Hello. I'm going to okay. go ahead and share my screen. So welcome, everybody, um, to our 22nd Lunch and Learn. This is so incredible. Um, so a couple of Zoom rules before we get started. Please mute yourself when you are not speaking. Review for presentation. Um, video sharing is optional, although we um, definitely want to see all your friendly faces. And then please type all questions and comments into the chat. We will have a short um, question and answer at the end of this uh, lunch and learn um, with our guest speaker today, and uh, which we have an incredible guest speaker. And so if you have any questions during his presentation, um, you can type it into the chat um, and, or unmute yourself um, near the end. A quick update from Autism Tree. We have, are, have now reached over 383,000 through all of our social media channels, which is incredible. Um, this is through our LinkedIn, Autism Tree Facebook, um, our Instagram, YouTube, and so on. Um, across all platforms, we've been able to reach all of these people since March, which is 100, over 170 odd days ago. Our posts have also been shared 681 times, which is amazing. Um, if you haven't uh, followed Autism Tree on, on social media, we definitely recommend you do. Um, we love that everybody's sharing our post and they're sharing it with their families and friends, really engaging with us during this time. It's just another way to connect. We have now um, have 243 videos on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe today. It's, it's super easy. It takes one second. Um, it's, we have posted 191 videos since March, since shelter in place to um, effect. And um, that's all from our community, from our program directors, from our volunteers. Uh, they've all submitted these amazing videos for our kids and families. And we do a couple different video series. One of them is our HPF at home series where we do um, fun one minute activities um, for kids and families to do at home together. And then we also do a reading with autism tree series um, where our volunteers read a children's book to our kids. Um, so we posted 63 of those videos and have reached 30, 000, over 30,000 people um, with just those videos alone. We have also continued to provide virtual events during this time. We have provided over 115 virtual events to date and uh, 16 events are coming up between now and the end of September um, that we're constantly adding more as well um, and throughout the year. And now we are currently offering 18 of our 20 programs. 17 of those are virtual and we host them on a weekly and monthly basis. I'd say about two to three Two, or two to five events um, each week. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Dana Hoff. She's our co-founder and volunteer executive director. Um, and she will um, introduce our special guest speaker today. We're so um, lucky and happy and blessed to have Francisco, who is our first international guest speaker joining us on Zoom from Brazil today. So. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, HPF family. I am so um, blessed that we are going to be having our first Zoom call with Francisco in Brazil. I know many of you um, had the unbelievable gift of meeting him when he was studying English in America. He touched me, um, Todd, Garrett, everybody who met him um, was blessed by him. And 
I feel like that is something that just um, he shines from is he, there's not very many people that I've met in the world that truly unite people just by their essence. And Francisco, I think um, probably on a, on a more global level, you do that just naturally. You brought in so many different people to the foundation to volunteer with you from many different countries. And you brought joy, not only to us, but to all the people you bring. Um, it, was, it was really special to reflect back on that and, and just to reflect with everybody today and just maybe take a moment to just breathe and think, how um, very, very proud I am that we're together in this, that we can have this time with Francisco. And, you know, just, I think that we're bringing out the best of each other. And I wanna continue to do that. If you haven't um, sent us in a little video or a photo or something to sort of put your fingerprints, although they are on here, your beautiful face, maybe some of your comments, but, this time is really unprecedented in the world and also at Autism Tree. And I just want you to know, I want your fingerprints on it. So I think most people have an iPhone that they can take a little video and share. And maybe I just wanna encourage you before the end of the year, create something that we can have as part of this time period of you just sharing maybe something you think would help someone else in the Autism Tree family. And that's really what these Lunch and Learns have helped us all do, helped us kind of take a breath and, and um, really reflect on how far we've come and how each day is an opportunity. And when we count our blessings, it's extraordinary what's happened because that has, is what we've been doing. And today I'm definitely counting with you, um, Francisco, being here from Brazil. With that, I'm going to kick off asking you guys a question. What is the first thing that you notice about a person? If you would type that in, Rebecca, would you type my answer in for me too? <laughs> Mine is going to be the first thing that I notice about a person is if I connect with their heart, like that's what will draw me in to a person is if I feel their heartbeat, if I feel that heart connection. Um, and next to that, I would say a person's eyes tell me a lot. But as we know with a lot of our friends on the autism spectrum, they don't always make eye contact. So the heart is my number one feeling that I notice about a person. And in honor of Francisco, everything I choose, the questions, the video, and the quote, all is in reflection of you. So this video is in a reflection of you today. And I think it really brings to life how beautiful it is to be different in so many different ways. So I'm gonna share that with you next. Hi, Chris. I love your, your um, answer to my own positive attitude. Love it. Hey, <laughs> how are Hi. you? Hi, nice to see you. Where are you? In Glasgow, actually, in Scotland. Oh, oh, this is becoming more international by the minute. So beautiful to see you. I miss you too. Yeah, really. Glad to join them. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know, Chris started a whole soccer program for our kids out here. Nice to meet you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you too. All right, I'm going to play the video now. <laughs> My mom and dad say we are all different and that makes us beautiful. We were all from different cultures and believe in different religions. It would be boring if we all look alike, think alike, or talk alike. Every day at my school, I see everyone around me is different and special. We all have different color skins and we are all different shapes and sizes. But we are all kids and we are all growing each day. Some of us have short hair and some of us have long hair. Some of us have straight hair and some of us have curly hair. Some do not cut hair and wear a puffka or a turban for their faith and religion. 
some wear kippa or scarf also. We all have different shapes of eyes. Some of us wear glasses and some of us don't. But we all see beautiful things around us. Some of us use our feet to walk and some of us use wheelchair. Others even use guide dogs to help them. But we all get around to different places. We may speak another language or communicate differently, but we all learn to express our feeling and learn to understand each other. All of us see different kinds of foods, but we all like to eat. Some of us like basketball and some of us like football. Some of us like golf and some of us like soccer. We may even dance to different songs, but all of us like to have fun after all. As you can see, we are all different and special in many ways. So next time you see someone different, it is important to respect and treat everyone the same way. After all, being different is beautiful and we can learn a lot from each other every day. I hope you guys love that. Um... I love when it said that everyone um, always wants to have fun together. And I think that is um, been honestly one of the most important things to Todd and I in starting Autism Tree is the level of difficulty in our everyday is always been there and it will always be, but we have to make sure that we make time for fun. And I feel like what really keeps Autism Tree honestly fun over the years is embracing each other's differences and um, definitely this quote reminds me of you Fran Francisco the beauty of the world lies in the diversity of its people and when I think of you I think of all the different people that you surrounded yourself when you were here um, in San Diego and how you opened up all of our hearts and our worlds just by being you I love looking at these pictures I love seeing you on Facebook with your family back in Brazil. Um, these are just pictures in the office during um, Giving Tuesday and the holidays of Winter Wonderland at USD. And um, I wanted to say that we have, as Rebecca shared um, on the earlier call today, the stats, which are amazing in terms of having over 380,000 people looking at the videos that we have now put up since shelter in place and this pandemic. But honestly, if I picked one that I think really speaks to what it's like at Autism Tree, like if I just picked one video and just kind of go, you know what, this is what, sh this is it, this is everything. It's right here, this video of Francisco talking from his heart. And this is just a very organic off the cuff video, but I love it. It's not scripted, <laughs> it's not professional, it's just re real world what was happening. International friends. International friends, yes, and they all are volunteer. And um, Francisco recently helped us uh, volunteering at an SPSC women's basketball game. They called us and they gave us free tickets for our families to go out. I was in a pinch and needed someone to help me, and of course he said yes. He brought like six of his friends. And I go, you were there at the basketball game, right? Yep. How was it? Was it awesome? Awesome. <laughs> so um, Francisco's uh, one of our hardest working volunteers. One time I asked him to come and help me unload the van, and he sent me a whole photo shoot of pictures of people smiling and unloading the van from the parking lot to the office. So it was like one of my favorite things to have to say. So I have a butterfly award for you for all of your work. Thank you. Francisco, do you want to say anything? Oh, I'm glad to, to help to be part of this and because and I, I, when I was in Brazil, I used it to help people, to help family there. And here I was looking for a place to feel the same. And when I arrived here, I, I really feel, felt the, like the, the, the love from everybody here. And this you can transmit to the, to the children. And really was amazing found here and, and be part of this because for me it's like, I was feeling incomplete when I was here and no helping. 
and when I was part of this, was really, really, really good for me. It's amazing. When I see the children, they're happy, and in the programs, I feel I'm doing like something well. But they, they think that we are doing something to them, giving some to them. But no, they are doing, they are giving some to us, and we feel really, really better and complete. Thank you so much for being here. Francisco, that video just lights me up like you did that night. I think that was um, December 2016, and Lisa didn't have babies then. Now she has two little boys, and and um, I'm I really want to just cherish that everything I said just happened on this call, which is you naturally open up Autism Trees World, and I want to thank Chris for being here from Scotland. That's just incredible because before this, we were having calls that we were excited that our, our East Coast friends were on the call. And now to have Francisco here from Brazil and Chris here visiting, listening from Scotland just means so, so much. Um, so with that, I wanna bring Francisco out and just say thank you to everybody for continuing to be here, for continuing to stay blessed and count our blessings and um, let's all count Francisco today extra um, in our our gratitude today thank you Francisco oh thank you so much Dana um, first of all thank you guys for having me I'm so deeply honored to be here today and when I lived in San Diego you guys were kind of my family in the US so volunteering for ATPF was an incredible experience for me in California, for sure. And I miss you guys, Dana, Lisa, Garrett, John Hickey, Chris, everybody. Everybody was always so kind to me and very important for my experience there. And I'm immensely thankful for that time. I mean this from the, the bottom of my heart. And okay, let me stop talking and go through our main subject. Uh, thanks for everybody attending here in this Lunch on Learn today. And we're gonna talk about Tismo Me, which is the first autism social network in the world. And I will discuss with you some, some topics about Tismo Me and you can ask me something if you have questions and, and in the end, uh, next. And okay, Dana said a lot about me, but who am I? And next, and I'm, I was, as was said, a volunteer and Autism Tree Project Foundation was my, like my home in 2016 and 2017. For one year, I was very happy being volunteered there. And next, and I'm I'm journalist and I'm a writer. I wrote a book, an autism book for families, uh, which was uh, sold um, for five thousand copies, which in Brazil is a is a big number because we don't have a huge market for, for books in Brazil. And this book could help a lot of people with, with accessible language about autism, saying, talk about the, the signs of autism. Next. And as I said, as a journalist, I, I have founded a um, free magazine on autism in Brazil. And since 2010, I'm struggling day by day to keep this magazine alive. And I'm the editor in chief of the magazine. Next. And by the way, in the last issue, uh, the, the cover article was about the pandemic, um, about this travel time that we are facing. And I wrote a huge article um, on the pandemic and, and autism in Brazil, which uh, I discovered that we had 
and we are having a big difference and a big spectrum of consequence of the pandemic because uh, some autistic here in Brazil, they are doing very well in this time, but some of them are struggling hardly day by day, unfortunately, with social distancing, the lockdown, um, and the consequence of these travel time of COVID-19. And next, and most important, of, most important of all is, I'm a daddy of two kids. My kiddos, uh, Giovanni, autistic, and he is 13. And he is very well doing, doing math. He is very well with numbers, very fast to doing the math. And Samantha, she is 11. She, she don't have autism, but she has a sticky foot. Just kidding, just kidding. And Samantha is an amazing drawer. She draws um, fantastically. And yes, I know they are gorgeous kids. I know, I know, just kidding. And next, and let's go talking about the problem that we want to solve with Tismo Me, which is a, a social network on autism. Um, next, we know that the prevalence of autism is rising year by year. And we had the update numbers from CDC, from Center of Disease and Control in the United States, it's one in 54 children has autism, what, what, which is a, a, a important number, it's alerting number. And next, in Brazil, we expect that we have, we may have two millions of people and affected by autism which means two million families affected by autism. And we don't have official numbers, but yes, we have a, a, a big, a big, a huge population to, to support. And next, and our point of view is we, we assume that autism is unique, not as each person is unique, but autism affects each one in a unique way. And next we can solve this problem, maybe with personalized medicine, because you have to treat each one in a personalized way, in a customized way. You have to treat any, each one with a unique way, you know? And next we started this process and doing a, a big project. The first step was Tismo Lab. It's the first lab in the world that is exclusively dedicated to doing genetic analysis for autism and related syndromes. And we are open since 2015 and we are doing a really unique analysis in the world just about autism and our solution. And we think if we combine science and technology, we can accelerate the innovations and create better collaboration process. And uh, why? To diagnose, to treat and care for their children and make the whole process, the whole journey faster, easier and less painful to families. That's the, the, the main point here. And our mission, uh, is to make healthcare for autism more preventive, predictive, and personalized, as I said, and uh, meaningfully reducing uh, healthcare costs can lead to better patient outcomes, what I think is the most important thing to, to this population, to, to bring benefit to autism. And we, had a, um, we have a, a a huge ecosystem um, on autism, but we noticed that they are kind of disconnected, you know? Uh, families don't talk enough and properly with physicians, 
that they don't talk enough with therapists uh, and they don't communicate enough with the science and scientists and with the pharmaceutical companies and all the ecosystem is have a, a kind of issue in, about communication, communication issue. Next. And we did the, a roadmap to, to think about the solution. And we did a lot of meetings and workshops with design thinking. And these pictures can, can show to you um, how big it was. And I think it was more than 200 people involved. And we came up with the idea that the solution could be a social network to connect people, connect this, this ecosystem. And we will, we're gonna launch, launch the MVP, the better version of an application, an app that will be a social network. And I'm gonna show something about this. And the social network is called Tismo Me. And we have um, the intention, we intend to organize and structure health data and information of everybody involved to autism. And which kind of information? We are talking about genom genomic data, clinical data, therapeutic data, asymmetrical data with disruptive technologies. We can put this together and process and deal with this data and bringing some benefits to people with autism, autistic people, which is the most important. And we, we, will, we will give to you suggestions to greater content and connections using artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, and suggesting you by the characteristics, by the genetic information, by your profile. And we can recognize your profile and deliver to you uh, greater content and deliver to you suggestions to connect with people with the same profile or the same challenge or uh, something that could uh, bring you benefit for both of us. And we intend to suggest to you some groups and communities as the social media have, as Facebook have or something like that to discuss a specific topics, specific subjects and suggest to you by your characteristics, genetic info, by your profile. And I'm gonna show you um, in a few minutes uh, a preview of this. And we are gonna have plug and play service, which means and we, if we have good service on autism, we can bring them together and put inside the app and we can have online course paid course, free course, events, streaming, and a search of physicians by geolocation, which is uh, very important to a lot of people. They are looking for a, a, a medical doctor or something like this. And a search of therapists, which is very, very important. If we talk about Brazil and the US, which is a, a huge countries, and that's a very useful feature it could be an, an amazing feature. And the most important of all, security and privacy. The data is yours. Your data, you know what you want to do with them. And we are, we are fit with Europe GDPR laws, California CCPA, Brazil LGPD, and all the, the laws of regulation of data protection. And you can authorize or not your data, uh, the use of your data. We can use to connect you to people. If you don't want, you just turn off that green button there and you can just stay away from the suggestions and we, we are not using your data. You, you, uh, we are not using your information about that. And uh, another amazing feature is you, you can store your medical register there and your genetic registers, like medical tests, medical prescriptions, reports, therapy reports, 
any document. If you have a, a big folder that you can carry on all the time, you can digitalize there and keep the, this information in the app and use this. And in the future, near future, you can, you will can uh, share this information with the, the profession that you want, like a, a physician doctor or something like that. And I have a video, a video just to show uh, a preview, a demo, I a little spoiler and of our app. Okay, play. <laughs> This is the app with a, a timeline like Facebook or other social media. Uh, oh, this is my post about this lunch learn of today. And we can search someone. Um, I'm gonna type like Moatri, Dr. Moatri can find him. And here we go. And he's there and we can, can see this information, his post, so his son is there and everything you can find someone and we have groups and um, oh, I create an amazing group here from ATPF uh, just to show and uh, just to show to us. And, and we have like health profiles. This is my son profile, Giovanni. And I, I can uh, put this information from him like communication, if he has a uh, diagnose and he's doing the treatment, the treatment or he, if he has intellectual disability and I can choose all the questions here. This is the, the, the information, the clinical information that I was talking about. And we can put this there and we can have like genetic information. This is a, a real information from Giovanni in, from his genetic test. And here's, here's the folder. Here's the folder of, the, uh, of his, his medical uh, documents and I can put everything there. And you can like authorize or not. Uh, you, you will choose if you, if you want to authorize or not. And you can give and you can regret about your authorization. And I have my information here. Yeah, like any, any social media and that's it. That's a, a quick video just to show the, the main features of the, of the app and we have a public beta version, a test version, and we will release that in late September, in a few weeks, we'll be there. For the US and for Brazil, uh, for Portuguese and English speakers, and uh, in this first phase, for this first phase, only guests will have access to Tismomi but you can sign up and ensure your invitation by this QR code here or typing uh, www.tismo.me and I'm gonna, gonna give a free pass just today and for those who would like to follow me and um, next I'm here if you want to follow me I'm here in this part of the globe uh, let me be closer and the next is here close to Paulista Avenue. Oh, just kidding, guys. Just kidding. Uh, just a, a joke to be, to be light. And if you want to follow me, we are chismo.me in the social, social media. And Paiva Junior, it's my personal username. And if you want to, to get an invitation, uh, go there and be part of this because I think it, we will good we will do good things to all the world thank you guys for for listening to me thank you so much francisco i'm so incredibly inspired by all the work that you've put into this and it's so needed across the board i know personally from interacting with each of our families you know the roadmap is so complex and they don't, usually don't know where to start and there's a, a million different pieces that fit into that puzzle and so you creating a tool that will help bring all of that together in one picture is incredible and i assume that as a, a 
as a father to your to your child with autism to your son and uh that that was something that you saw that was needed and you took action which is really admirable so thank you so much for thank sharing you. <laughs> your story oh thank you for your kind words and we are trying to do something really big something else on autism and we are counting on uh, everybody. Everybody could help and do and give us some suggestions and help us in the, with the better version. Wonderful. Yes, and I'm gonna open it up to anybody who wants to ask questions to, San to Francisco. Um, we, are, we have about 10 minutes, so lots of time for different questions. If you wanna type them in the chat or unmute yourself, we'd love to hear from you. Um, just give me give me a little wave or anything. And then also I wanted to add to everybody that you are welcome to um, visit our our website. We will have post a do a follow-up email with all of the resources with, with Francisco's presentation, um, with the link to tismo.me if you want to check that out and sign up um, with the little QR code that he provided to, to sign up for free. Definitely take advantage of that. Um, and we'll have that up on our website and send that out in a follow-up email to all of you later today. A few comments from the chat. Tismo.me will help a lot of families. Definitely very powerful, life-changing. Well done, and I really love Brazil. <laughs> Thank you, Terrence. Um, congratulations, Francisco, and to every, everyone on an amazing project. Um, one of our families, Tamar, thank you for just signing up. That's amazing. Uh, wonderful. Awesome, Francisco. Congratulations. So if anybody has any questions, do you want to unmute yourself? Maybe Tamar, do you want to share a little bit about um, what you think about uh, Francisco since you just signed up and Tismo.me? Yeah, I, I really appreciate what you're doing. There definitely needs to be more people that are being proactive and I, I just I just wanted to say I appreciate it and I wanted to look look into it a little bit more and I had um hey I, I got I, I have kiddos here at home like I'm helping them with schoolwork so I was like one ear listening one ear not but I I took a couple pictures of your slideshow but I just wanted to say thank you so much that's really that's so so kind of you what you're doing for for all of these families Oh, thank you so much. Uh, awesome words that uh, uh, make us like running more and more day by day with this kind of, of word that you can hear. Thank you so much. And Francisco, I love that you have the global perspective as well. Um, do you have is, I mean, obviously you're still in the, in the beta stages of the app, but do you have an ultimate goal of maybe expanding it past the US and Brazil eventually? We, we intend to be global. We intend to be uh, an app that could support all the autistic people in the world. And we think we can start with Brazil and the US in Portuguese and in English, uh, because uh, in the US, I, I think it's a, a big market and it's a, you guys have a big population. And Brazil is a, is a, a big fan of social media. We 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 come with uh, with a lot of people together in the social media, like we do in Facebook, we do in Instagram, LinkedIn, and uh, every single social media has a lot of Brazilians there. I don't know why, but we love social media, and that's why we started with Brazil and the U.S. But we intend to go um, worldwide. We, we intend to go through the, all the countries and maybe after that we can, we can have a, a Spanish and Chinese translation or something like that. And tools to translate things to people uh, uh, of different languages, they could communicate between them. And we intend to do this, this things because if you think about, if I have an a, a, um, autistic boy and he's three years old, for example, and someone from, I don't know, from Italy, from Scotland, could be a, a boy is maybe 17 years old, and they have similar characteristics and similar 
and challenges. Uh, could you imagine and how useful could be if you put these guys connected, put this guy together to exchange some ideas, to exchange some experience? I think this could be an, an amazing feature that we could have. Thank you. Um, we do have one question from Gian Franco. Um, forgive me, Gian, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but he had an amazing question. Francisco, can you explain a little bit better why Tismo.me will help families to achieve their goals using their personal data? Oh, we, we, we intend to, to organize their data, their health data, their health information, because if you have this information organized and let's let's imagine a situation and i have a scientist like dr Moatri, and and he has an, a good budget to do a research but he have to find 200 families with specific characteristics like um, boys with autism and between 10 and 14 years and with seizures and uh, it's very very hard to to find this a specific profile of individuals if you have this connection if you have this information you can connect them and improve the researchers improve the research and the researchers and of course we can improve the life of the autistic people and if you structure and organize this kind of data we we don't even imagine what we can do what we will can do in in the future using this information in a proper way in a transparent way and in an honest way you know uh, saying the guys saying to the guys uh, okay i'm i'm transparent i'm using your data for this and if you agree if you authorize we can help you that's the the that's what I mean. Thank you, Francisco. Um, we're big fans of Dr. Allison Motri here at Autism Tree. He, for anybody who doesn't know, we hold an annual neuroscience conference. Um, we hosted our fifth annual just last year. Of course, because, because of the pandemic, we had to postpone it this year. Um, but uh, Dr. Allison Motri is our chairman of the neuroscience conference. And our goal with this conference each year is to bridge the gap between the neuroscience community and our kids and families who live it every day. And we invite presenters um, from all over the nation and uh, occasionally around the world um, to come and speak and present on their latest research on autism, pediatrics, neuroscience. Um, we usually hold, hold it every fall. I would definitely encourage everybody if you wanna learn more about our neuroscience community, you can reach out to me personally. Um, we have, or we have some more information on our website of um, past speakers. And then Tamar had another question. We have just a couple minutes left so we can have two more questions and then anybody will be providing our um, Francisco's email directly as well um, if you'd like to reach out to him directly. Um, Tamar asked, Francisco, are there any devices that you know of to help nonverbal adults communicate? Oh, I, I think um, iPad could be a, a good device for that if you have the, the, the right apps. And I think I could, could give a, a bit piece of advice, maybe using PECS, Picture Exchange Communication System. They have a, 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 good, a good, good app for that. And you can communicate and if you are nonverbal. And we think we can like be a hub of solutions like this to join the app and be a, a central of of solutions, a central of apps, of other tools to, to help people. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, um, we do have, um, Tamar, I don't know if you know about, we do host a, an AAC Typers Club, um, usually typically monthly, um, with uh, Shelly and Otto, Lana. Um, Otto is 16 and he's nonverbal and he actually was one of our main presenters at our neuroscience conference last year. And uh, we did a one-on-one -on -one with Otto and he uses an AAC device. And we usually have this club that's for all of our nonverbal or they struggle with any uh, non-speaking um, uh, 
uh, our kids and families who want to socialize with each other and they they love the zoom meetings because they get to use the chat feature um but yes that's another device that um, oh, thank you i didn't yeah i didn't know that i have a friend who's um wanted to know more information about that and she's joining us but she's um uh so i just wanted to get get her that information so thank you i'll i'll reach out to you afterwards and get that from you Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Well, everybody, we'll ju we're just at about time. I'd love to take a group picture of all of us. Thank you so much for joining today. We had such a wonderful group. Um, so I'll take the picture. Everybody, if you want to turn on your cameras, we would love to see your lovely faces. Um, I'll give a second and big smiles. Ready? One, two, three. Beautiful. And all Pablo, right. I just want to say a quick thank you for all you did when you were here with our program. This guy, we would ask for a volunteer, and Pablo would show up with a posse of six or eight people of what can we do? It was a great problem to have of what do I do with eight volunteers when I only needed one or two? And um, going over to the USC ticket office and going, yeah, I need eight more free tickets, please. She looked at me, I'm like, that's some more volunteers show up. I'm like, oh, okay. But you made life so much easier, and I'm just, I, I just put in the chat that I've been following, I've been getting your newsletter, and it comes in Portuguese, so I've been trying to read it and follow along, and then I'll translate it into English and see how close I was, and I'm actually getting better at my Portuguese, so thank you for that, too. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad to know, John Hickey. I'm glad to know. Uh, you used to say that I had the uh, UN Army. International Army from the United right. Nations in ATPF, <laughs> which is uh, the best joke ever. <laughs> well, it was the truth because all of your friends were from all over everywhere. And that was part of the fun of meeting your friends. It's like, okay, and where are you from? And you're from, you're from what? <laughs> uh, I know. And if you, saw, if you saw in that um, video, there's nobody I remember in 16 years that Take pictures like Lisa was saying of you guys unloading the van, all your friends unloading the van. And I, I love that because in all reality, um, those tasks are a godsend to have someone do and it deserves a picture and a thank you to each person. And I think honestly, um, I, I found out a long time ago, that's one of the hardest things to run up a, a nonprofit that is all volunteer is the energy to do everything plus to make sure you thank everybody and so there's just no way to say how cool that was that you took pictures unloading the van of your friends i wish we did that more you know um because it's it's all those details that really matter so much that become really exhausting to someone like rebecca or whoever else me in the early days loading all the vans that unloading them half the time it's sitting in my throughout my entire house <laughs> so I just you know it was really fun to look at that Francisco and to tell you I don't recall anyone else to this day taking pictures like that <laughs> so thank you that's part of your legacy great great well it was a fun day and everybody had a, a good time there and helping people I think you can feel something good inside you and I think it's the most important thing Thank you, Francisco, so much for your time today. And it was so great seeing everybody. We hope you, you join us for our other Lunch and Learns. We hold these weekly every Wednesday at noon. Um, so I know we have a lot of people all over the globe um, that are joining us today, which is amazing. Um, so thank you for joining us and we hope to see you again soon. And, um, I never usually make a plug, but next week is Dr. Lawrence Fun, correct, Rebecca? Yes, so, correct. If Chris or um, you have time to come, you guys, Dr. Lawrence Fung is probably one of the most traveled global um, globe trotters for hiring people with autism. He is the most influential person I know that has a teenage son with autism. I don't want to blow my cover on what I'm going to say about him next week, but um, if you guys can be there, he is the the leading man that I've met um, for a, on the global landscape of hiring people with autism. And he's a professor and a researcher at Stanford, but um, he's going to be here next week. And some of you might have met him at our neuroscience conference. He's been there the last couple of years speaking. 
but I hope you can come back <laughs> to Francisco and Chris <laughs> and all of you. <laughs> I'll provide. Yeah, it's a mind, mind blowing, mind blowing guest, and I, I'm do the best to to be here next week for sure. I think you. And I have friends be, here. Erica, Eamon, Chris, everybody here. Thanks, guys, for for that time and for now. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful Thank day. Thank you. Have a good day. Oh.